I'm Jake. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Two thousand eighteen Nissan Leaf. So continuing with Eco Month, it's another fully electric car. But Eco Month never meant full Eco. We tried; it was just too hard. So let's get to the range, torque, and horsepower. The range is two hundred and forty-two kilometers. It has two hundred and thirty-six pound-feet of torque and one hundred and forty-seven horsepower. Those are all pretty good numbers. I feel like the sweet spot is still 350 kilometers for an electric car. Oh, I agree fully. The more range, the better, but 300 is like the good minimum. Yeah, that's the good minimum. Yeah, yeah, good minimum. Th this is like a nice minimum, but like a good solid that you don't have to really worry about is 350. So the Leaf has been around for a while. The first one was deemed as kind of ugly. I, I dug it. I thought it was hideous. This one's a, a nicer version of that. I think this one looks very good. I like it too. You know what one of my favorite parts is? No. The charging in the front. That is great. That's a great place for it. That's every such a cool trademark look. Yeah, in every other car you're like, is it on the right, is it on the left? Sometimes it doesn't pass the charging port test. And I guess the biggest change in the looks is that the rear end doesn't have those taillights that come all the way down anymore with that weird like slope. Yeah, thank you for not doing that this time. I miss that. I think that was a cool electric car quirk that they should have kept. Oh, I'm so glad it's gone. But for sure, my favorite part of the looks is still all that cool pattern in the grill. Yeah, I agree. It's like an actual 3D cool pattern. Okay, so let's talk about patterns real quick. All right. <laughs> electric cars seem to replace carbon fiber and stuff with like weird electric patterns. Yeah, they're always like digital their own. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's like its own weird honeycombs and like yeah. digitalness. <laughs> okay, and like hopping inside for a second, we have this cool pattern right here on the dash. Yeah. I think they should start replacing it. The next one should have like the matrix, like Neo yeah, number pattern. Zeros and ones. That's what it should look like. <laughs> Digital yeah. the whole time. I agree. <laughs> Matrix edition. Overall, with the looks, there's nothing like remarkable that stands out about it, but it looks good as a whole package. Yeah, but now let's talk about charging. Level two and level three? It does both. So this has level three charging. And it takes approximately one hour for 80%, which is very good. Level two is seven and a half hours, which is respectable. And level one charging times are nowhere to be found on Nissan's website. Also with the level three charging time, I had to go to Nissan UK to be able to find that. But the level one charging time is at least 20 to 30 hours from what I've found in my research. Now let's talk about driving this. Driving this is completely whatever. fine. <laughs> it's actually completely fine. It's completely whatever. It is whatever in a fine way. Except it does have one redeeming quality. Gangster lane keep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it does have Pro Pilot Assist, which is great, and it actually does work really well. I complained about it on the Infinity. If you start to take turns that are slightly larger, it will not like that. The suspension is also really good. It's really comfortable to drive. You're not going to be sending it too hard. I mean, I'm going to send it yeah. into cliche, but it's not going to be that hard. It's going to be an electric send. And it's not bad. Like, you're really not going to be sending it, but it handles cliche just fine electrically. We don't get that electric tire squeal. No, we don't. And this does also have Nissan's e-pedal, which is one pedal driving. We had a debate about that in the smart car video. Now this is actual one pedal driving. Okay, let off the gas pedal right now. I did. Nothing's happening because I'm in D. Now I'm going to put e-pedal and my brake lights just went on and I'm pretty much coming to a dead stop. That is one pedal driving. This is serious one pedal driving. That is one pedal driving. Not serious, it is one pedal this driving. This one doesn't slow you down as much as the Smart for 2 did without having to e-pedal. Yes, both of them in drive, they're pretty equal, I would say. No, 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 the Smart slowed down way more. Regardless, we're talking about one pedal driving. And I think that had somewhat built in one pedal driving with no options. It's not somewhat, it either is or isn't one pedal driving. No, only the Sith deal in absolutes. You don't get that, do you? No. <laughs> Then we have B mode and we have to use this weird shifter to get into it. So you put it from drive into B by using the weird shifter. I love it. I, I hate it. It's perfect electric car stuff. It is an electric car quirk. It's pretty much the same as the Prius one, just in a different shape. Yeah, but there's no like separate knob. It's kind of just built into itself. Yeah, it's a different shape because look, this is the exact same pattern on yes, the Prius is. pretty it much. Is. Yeah. Except for like their brake mode, you go down to the, whatever. It's pretty similar. Much, yeah. When I got in the car and looked at the shifter, I smiled because right away I knew it was silly, but I knew exactly how it was going to work. I had no issue using it. This yeah, is yeah. true. It's like, whatever. It's just <laughs> weird. It's just, you get used to it, whatever. They, they trained us monkeys how to shift them. I will finally agree that this is whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, man, a lot of stuff's whatever lately. Some of it is. Something sucks so bad that you kind of just need to give up on caring, right? Mm, to some aspect. I'll we talk about it while I'm driving, but there's a lot of stuff that just like sucks. Yeah, something. For above 40 grand dollar purchase, things suck. Like what? All right, you drive. What bothers you, Yuri? This f***ing infotainment. Okay. We're beeping that out. Yes, we are. 
Rewinding satellite radios, let's just look at that real quickly. I know a lot of people don't care, but the fact that it's put in so stupidly in this car just shows that this whole company is just out to lunch when it comes to infotainments, I swear. I click that, cool, satellite XM menu, and then I wanna go to replay, and then I can replay live replay, but then if I change the station, I'm prompted with a yes or no to cancel. That is hilarious. Like, who thought that was a good idea? Nobody. And also with this infotainment, so we have like the worst maps ever. Yeah, terrible built-in maps. We've got some eco settings, but they're all garbage. It's hard to use. Super lag on all the stuff. Although I do like that they provide the range map, but you'll never use it. The range map is garbage. Okay, so on the range map, you move it around, there's a crosshair. Any map that when you click has a crosshair is trash. Yeah, in 2018, It's yeah. like the worst thing ever. And then we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, thank God. Thank you, Nissan! But it's like desaturated, low res, <laughs> really rough. like laggy, like. <laughs> yeah, it's really like, bad. Thank God you have it, but like. It's not good, but it's there. Yeah, well, yeah, ugh. yeah. Moving on to what else we don't like. Hey, Yuri. Yes. When we're stopped and you try and get out of the car, what happens? Okay, so usually when you're stopped, you try to get out of the car, you pull the handle, it'll automatically unlock. That happens in every single car we've ever driven. When you're in park. That's right. When this is in park, it doesn't let you do that. That's right, because you the car's still on. Car off. Other electric cars let you open the door. So for electric cars, I get it. It's a safety issue ish. Ish. I guess I don't really hate much else. No, you just got really worked up over that infotainment. But it's such a vital part of the car. It's pretty vital, it's yeah. It's center of everything. You know, mm. people say, why do you care about rewinding radio so much? Nobody uses that, just use Spotify. Why don't you have an iTunes playlist? You know what? I don't like to pick music because I get sick of it. I want a DJ to pick the music for me. I just want to pick the genre. And people are like, who listens to satellite radio? It comes on every car as an option. That's one of the few things that can be an option on every single car. So for all the haters, Deal with it. Moving on from that, what do you think about the gauges? They're nice. They're amazing. They're not amazing, they're nice. No, they're amazing. So we have analog on the right and digital on the left with a lot of customization, which is cool. Just the way I like it. But you know what I don't like? What's that? What speed am I going? Yeah, that's right. You need to check the analog thing because it doesn't say on the huge digital screen. They couldn't have just added that somewhere. Like just give an option for things that make sense. You know what I mean? He's really mad today. Just thinking, just sometimes I'm just tired of like dumb things in cars, you know? Yeah. Sorry, Nissan, that I had to let go on your car. I'm sure the 370Z Nismo will be great. And another thing, the reverse camera. It's garbage quality, but the fact that they use such a small garbage screen- Doesn't matter. Makes it clear. So you know how like when you play a VHS cassette, on your old analog TV, it was fine. It looked crystal clear. It was fine, yes. And then like when you started getting flat screen TVs, you plug in your VCR, you're like, this looks like trash. Yeah, garbage. That's this. Yes, I agree. And for all you people who don't know what VHS cassettes are, look it's, it up on the internet. It's before DVDs. Yeah. If which, you don't know what that is. Which also looks like garbage <laughs> yeah. on new TVs, because they're 720, new TVs are like 1080 and 4K. Exactly. It's the modern day VHS and tube TV in a car. Yeah, but at least we have volume and tuning buttons yeah. and hard buttons for everything, which that's, is great. That's shocking. That's like... It's amazing. Overall, this interior is not bad. The seats are very comfortable. We've got soft touch in a lot of spots where you'd want them. A little bit of plastic here and there, but it's really nice in here. This armrest doesn't extend forward, so I can't touch the steering wheel while driving. The armrest is also hilariously small, but I mean, it's enough. And it it doesn't telescope. No, it doesn't. You know what? Not a good seating position. It's very normal car, which is why I like it. Yes, this is very normal car. Everything about this is very normal car. For an electric car. Yes. <laughs> we have to preface that. While you're all worked up, let's see if I can work you up some more. Visor test. Three, two, one. Oh! Redeeming yes. quality! Yes. yes, Nissan! <laughs> <laughs> oh, best visor test of all time. And let's find out about the box test now. Nine. 10. That's pretty impressive. Shout out Kevsky Pops. Not bad. It does fit a small cup of coffee just fine. Yes, it does. You know what else is fine? What? Visibility while driving. Visibility is great. It's honestly, anytime I see a little window there, I know these guys planned it out. <laughs> Should we angrily review the rest of this car from now on? Let's go for it. All right. <laughs> you know what? The steering wheel actually feels really good. It's a really nice leather. Yeah, and it's D-shaped. <laughs> it is D-shaped. <laughs> but you know what? Compared to a lot of steering wheels, like this feels a million times better it than does. most Kia steering wheels. Like, the quality? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a weird, I don't know where they source their leather oh, yeah. from. This it's, is a fantastic steering wheel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another weird thing, the rear heated seat controls. Oh, right, yeah. They're uh, behind me over here. Back to one pedal driving. This is very aggressive one pedal driving. Because it's one pedal driving. But this is, there's like three stages of aggressiveness in this one pedal driving. There are levels to this one. And I really like it. Hey, Yuri. Yes? How's the horsepower in this car? 
It doesn't have that electric wheel spin that all the other ones we had had. It doesn't have that crazy amount of torque. I want electric burnouts in all my electric cars. Yeah, that's really fun to have. All right, let's get to the price. Right around $45,000. Canadian. I think that's a decent price for this. This, compared to all of the other electric cars we've been reviewing, where would you place it? I would place it near the top, but not the first one. I keep thinking about the Ionic we drove and how it's got that Hyundai Kia infotainment and everything inside there was so easy to see. Our distances are traveling, you know, the records we set. I'm so excited for the electric Kona that I just like can't wrap my head around anything else going to be better than that. Yeah, I think right now for me, out of the cars we've driven, it would be the Bolt. Then it would be probably the Ionic and the E-Golf on the same level and then the Leaf and then the BMW i3 S way at the bottom. I really like the Bolt EV, but I know the infotainment and the screens and the way everything works in there is gonna be so much better in the Kona. Yeah, I but just, out of the cars we've driven, how would you rank everything? I am preemptively ranking the Kona at the top because I just have so much confidence from the Ionic. Okay, what about everything else I'm asking about? Well, for right now, Bolt EV at the top because of the range. I think the i3 was near the top. I really like that. I really like the Smart for 2 because it's a convertible. The i8 is number one. Oh, and, yeah, i8. Yeah, and then yeah, the rest okay. just kind of floats around the middle. You know what? I'm going to rethink that. NSX right here, right at the top, number one. Hey, there we go. All right, cool. <laughs> so don't forget to subscribe. I hope you like Eco Month as much as our wallets enjoyed it. You know what? Charging is actually kind of expensive here and there. It is kind of. Like I said in one of our other ranting videos. I know, I know. Hit the notification bell, patreon.com slash the straight pipes. And join our YouTube membership. That's about it. Hopefully it's uh, gasoline month soon. Yeah, I think it will be. But I do like Eco Month. Yo, Hellcats though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. Going for a drive. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that.